Hello everyone, this is Alex with Patterns for Pirates and today we're starting the Go Team Sew Along. The Go Team pattern comes in four different options for everyone in the family. We have a youth option, a jersey, a youth option dress, an adult jersey and an adult um, dress for different body types and different figures. So definitely chose the one you want to do. I am going to do for this sew along, I'm going to sew the youth jersey, which is the more uh, boyish version of it. So it's, it has a standard uh, straight cut on the side seams, whereas the dress has more like an hourglass. It has a narrower waist. So I'm sewing for my little one this time around. And uh, while the Go Team jersey you would think is more geared towards sports fans, which technically I'm not. I like love soccer, which I know is not very popular around here, but we are more of a soccer family and we do jujitsu, so we're not into football and uh, basketball and whatnot. But from uh, most of the um, pattern pictures you would say it's geared to more towards sports shirts however I can tell you it is not the case I will show you in this so long that us Disney people can take any sports <laughs> pattern and turn it into a park friendly uh, shirt so that being said for my uh, go team um, jersey for this sew along, I'll be using a Parks Inspired print. This is coming from our sponsor, from the sew along sponsor, Purple Dragon Fabrics. You can find them on Facebook and I'll link their website as well as the uh, Facebook group in the blog that comes with this video. As always with Patterns for Pirates sew along, there's a daily blog that I release every morning of the sew along and in that blog you find these videos on YouTube, on the YouTube channel, uh, Patterns for Pirates YouTube channel, which I do encourage you to subscribe to and so you can see them in two different places. <clears throat> So Purple Dragon has graciously sent me this fabric to show during the sew along. They're also including two prizes for our winners because as always we have two winners. One gets a Patterns for Pirates gift card, the other one gets a Made for Mermaid gift card and both will get um, a prize for, from Purple Dragon fabrics. So uh, as with our latest patterns, the uh, Go Team ones include four different files. They include a letter format for US friends, uh, A4 for anyone outside of US. These are patterns that you will be taping together. You will also we also included an A0 format, which is a uh, type of format that can be printed on a plotter or in a copy shop. And we also include a projector file, which is what I'll be using right now. You know, if there's a projector file, I will uh, definitely be using that. Uh, I do believe we have a projector file blog post that I will link in today's video. And um, I will have that for anyone that wants to check it out. My projector is already set up. So all I have to do right now is just open my file Put the percentage as I know from calibrating it's always the same with every uh, every project that I do and get to cut, cutting my uh, fabric so I'll meet you back here in just a second the lights will be dimmer so this way I can see my projection on my um, table and we'll chat while we cut see you in a second We are back. I've opened my projector file, chose uh, my size for my kiddo and um, put the percentage. The pattern does have layers so you can definitely choose the size or sizes you would need to use if you want to blend uh, or have to blend in sizes. Uh, for the um, jersey ones it's a straight cut so I would not worry so much about blending sizes if your waist is, puts you in a smaller size than chest and hips because this is the, the type of um, 
style of shirt so it has a, a straight cut on the sides the dress option is, instead does have an hourglass shape so for that one I do encourage you to blend sizes when uh, when you pick the right one for you or wherever you're sewing for so I opened my file and I'm going to start by cutting the main the biggest pieces first like I always do and, and this what I'm using right now is a cotton lycra it's a custom cotton lycra this pattern is drafted for t-shirt knits so anything like tri blend or even those interlocks that you can find Joann's just be very cautious that they they do shrink a lot like a lot would work for this pattern um, cotton lycra anything that has a t-shirt feel, a sturdier feel <coughs> to it. Some poly, some meshes would look great in that more sporty feel. Okay, so we're gonna start by cutting the front and the back. And you know what I like to do? I like to put my notches for the center as I cut. So I make my life easier when I have to find the centers. Okay, so this one is the front. Alright. I am very excited to see what kind of fabrics you are choosing for your go team pattern. Okay, so I put a, no a notch here so that shows me that it's the center of the front. Let's do the back. Make sure that your grain line goes along the fold of the fabric. I'm trying to minimize the waste of fabric. Maybe I can squeeze in a second shirt. I know my little guy will not say no to these shirts. Actually, on the back, I want to put the notch the other way, so inside, so I know it's the back. So for the front, I put my notch up, for the back, I cut a little notch inside. Smaller than my seam allowance, obviously. The pattern has a um, half an inch seam allowance, so there's plenty of room to put a notch. Alright, so that is the front and the back, and let's see, what else did I just... Uh, I think I'll do the neck band with this fabric and the arm uh, details like the stripes. I'm going to go ahead and do the V neck option. Okay, so this is the V neck. Excuse me. Okay, so this is where my V-neck style is. Just make sure you follow the grain lines. There is a notch on the v-neck pattern so make sure you mark that when you cut your fabric and I need to also do my arm uh, bands like my arm strips in this fabric 
So let's find those. Man, I love a projector file. Okay, found them. So here they are, and I'll see if I can. Cut two at the same time. Yep. My fabric is non directional, so I can fold it like this. If your fabric is directional, don't fold it and cut. Just cut them individually to make sure that the direction goes correctly. Okay. I need one for each band, for each arm. So I'm cutting two of each. I think this will turn out very cute. Okay, and then the second one. It's a little smaller because it goes lower on the arm. And there you have it. We'll cut the second one too. And now we have to do, and this is it with this fabric. I'll use the main print right now to cut the uh, yolks and the sleeves. So let's start with the yolk. And we're going to be doing the v-neck on this one. So, it will be right here. I'm trying to figure out if this is a directional print or not. Or it's a toss. Yeah, it looks kind of directional. So be cautious of that. I'll have the yolks front and back and the sleeves in the same print. So this is the front. The v-neck is the only one that's not on fold. Okay. Whereas the crew neck and the um, hood are cut on fold. Let's do the back. This center one here. And then the sleeves. Okay. And I forgot. Oh, I actually don't need a notch for the v-neck. But for, for the back, I will add the notches even if they're not in the pattern. I do like to put them because it makes it easier for me to find the center. So I'm putting a notch here and then a notch of the neckline. Okay. And last but not least, we're going to do the sleeves and I think for this one I'll do short sleeves. The pattern includes a three-quarter sleeve, a long sleeve, and a long sleeve with cuff. So plenty of options to choose from. Okay. So I'll do one at a time because it's a directional print. So, sort of ish. Okay. 
and then I want to add my placement markings. Oops, I forgot the notch here for the center there. So this one needs to go on the other side because they need to be mirror images. Don't forget, your sleeves are mirror images. And because this is a white background, I can kind of see it. It's easier to see the print the um, projection on a solid fabric but this is mainly white so it's not that difficult okay i'm gonna remove the outer part and i'll show you my first tip of the saw along so what you want to do is grab a waterable so water soluble double-sided tape Dritz makes them pretty expensive but my favorite ones come from uh, wizardry stitchery and crafts so what i do because i can always write on the fabric and i want to do two steps in one instead of drawing my lines right there on the fabric i have my projection right here so i can see the lines i'm going to put double-sided tape And I'll put one at the top line and then I'm gonna have to use my eighth of an inch one because I, I ran out of quarter inch but I do have eighth of an inch so I can put that one on the bottom line So if you only have smaller ones, like eighth of an inch or a quarter inch, you can definitely use those. I prefer my half an inch because I just like working with it better. So I do my half an inch on the bottom line here. And this will also ensure that your lines are straight. And then a quarter inch would have been better, but I ran out. So this is all I have. See? I can use it, but it's not going to be enough. So a quarter inch for the top. But I am out of it. So I definitely need to place an order with wizardry for that one. Oh, I left my... Well, that's why it was sticky. I left, I didn't peel it properly. Also, pattern weights. I should have added pattern weights to this. And I'm not going to peel those off. I'm not going to peel the paper off just yet. This is basically my marking on the fabric where the um, strips will go. I believe we're doing that day three. I'm not sure, but it's not today and not right now. So I'm not going to remove that from the fabric. It stays right there, just like that. What I need to do though, is make sure that I do the same thing on the other one. So this one is mirror image. So, but the bottom is the same straight line. So I put that, and this time I will put some pattern weights to help me out. Obviously the top is not matching the curve because it's, this is the mirror image. However, I align the bottom, bottom um, hem 
and that that would match regardless of the mirror image or not and now I'm placing one here on the bottom be gentle because you, you don't want it to, you don't want to move it and one here at the top and my top the top of the um, double sided tape here aligns with the top of the line and here the bottom of the double sided tape aligns with the bottom of the line and then I will use my eighth of an inch for the bottom of the top like this and then Perfect. So now I know they're straight, I know they're placed correctly, I have them ready for when I add my strips in uh, day three, I believe. If you don't have water soluble, um, if you don't have water soluble double sided tape, what you can do is use like a friction pen. Those will write on your fabric, but it, the pen will disappear once you press it and steam it. Make sure that you use a ruler and you, uh, using the projection, you draw the four lines for your placement. You can use chalk as well, whatever you're comfortable with. My preferred method is this one, where I put them as I cut my fabric, and now they're just ready for when I get to that step in, um, in the sewing process. So that is pretty much it. All the fabric is cut. Snap a picture of your um, pretty fabric pile and post it in day one photo comments. You'll find the album for the Go Team Sew Along in the Made for Mermaids and Parents for Pirates Sew Along group that will be linked in the description of the video and it's also linked in the blog on um, parentsforpirates.com. And I will see you back here tomorrow when we'll be sewing the shoulder seams and adding the neckline. Talk to you soon. Bye.